One of the things about Next.js I like most is the fact that both the server and the client use the same language. They know about each other in the sense that they know what code they use to render a page. For both the server and the client, that's React, of course. But this small detail actually enables something really powerful. When first rendering a page, Next renders the React code on the server. But the biggest benefit actually comes after Next sends the first data to the client. As soon as you now click a link to go to a different page, you will not see a full page refresh anymore. That's actually when React in the client takes over. Clicking a link to a next page will only get the data it needs to render the next page from the server. As soon as it got that, it will render everything client side. So that means there is no full page refresh. And that means that shared things like, for example, the navigation will stay on the page. And since they are there all the time, it means we can do some really cool things like animations, for example. Today, I want to take a look at this non-existent website, which we are going to enhance together by adding some animations. Both animations to the main navigation, as well as some page transitions. The design you see is heavily inspired by a design I found on Dribbble by Ariel. I make sure to link that in the description as well. For now, let's make this. On the right side, you see a Next.js app with already some components added in. The components I added are all of the base components we need. So the only thing we need to do actually is add in all the animations. Let's first see what's already set up by running yarn dev. On the left side, you see the basic version of the website I already created. It has a very basic homepage with a footer underneath for every page, kind of a hero image and the main navigation. Mainly the products page has already been built. All the other pages are actually just empty pages, so we have something to click later on. One thing that's still lacking is the ability to see what's the current active menu item and also a very nice transition whenever you switch between them. So the first thing we're going to do is add frame or motion for adding all these animations in. As soon as we've added frame or motion, we can start adding some animation. Let me quickly show you something about the basic structure of the app. We are currently using Next.js 13's app directory. This app directory gives us the option to create layout files, which are actually wrapped around all of the different pages. So as soon as you, like you see here, have a layout on the root level of the page, it will wrap every route inside this layout component. You see that this contains the basic HTML structure, as well as a header, which contains the main navigation and the footer of the page. We also use Next.js font loader to load the font. The first thing I want to do is add an active state to the main navigation items. By going to the header component, you see that I created an array with all of the anchors in the navigation. They are then rendered in an, an order list on the page and show up like this. What I want to do is add a really nice underline to the page that actually moves from one menu item to the other as soon as you change pages. In order to do so with frame or motion, we can add some component called a motion span. This motion needs to be imported from frame or motion, and that renders then a span component. This for now is an empty element because it will only be a line, and unfortunately it needs to be kind of useless HTML element, because that will give us the ability to animate from one state to the other state, like you will see in a second. As soon as I added frame or motion, you see that there is actually an error popping up. This error has something to do with the new Next.js app directory. Because by default, everything that you put in the app directory will be run as a server component. So that means that any component that is run as a server component cannot have any state or, for example, context in this case. There is actually a way to tell Next.js which component is a server component and which should also be executed on the client. Because by default, it will only execute the code on the client to, to render the page, and then it will send static HTML over to the client. In order to tell React that this code also should run on the client, because in this case it has a context that needs to run on the client, you can add the use client at the top of the page. And by doing so, we are telling Next that this component runs on the client. And you see the error is gone. Let's make this underline up here. This needs to be an absolute line that's on the left and fully at the bottom. That also means as soon as we make this absolute, that the parent should be relative because the absolute element should be relative to the anchor, of course. A 
as soon as we've added these lines, you see them appear in navigation. Right now, they just show up for every anchor we have. Of course, this should be dynamic based on the pot. In Next13, we have a new hook we can use called use pot name that we have to import from Next Navigation. And this pot will give us the value of the current pot we are looking at. What we want to do is only render this under the line if the pot matches the current link we're looking at. That way, this line becomes an active state. So if we now switch page, you see that the line moves. But there is no animation yet. But the cool thing with frame motion is actually it's only a really minor change we have to do to make this better. We add layout ID equals underline. Then frame motion will know that every element with layout ID should be a thing that actually shares its, its current state. So as soon as one disappears and another one appears, it will automatically add animation from one state to the other, purely because we are using layout ID and the motion span here. So if we now switch a page, you actually see that the line moves. And even if we go to the very long name, you see that it also resizes the, the size of the line. By only adding this small change, we've already added so much more attention to detail to, to this website. It just feels way more fun to use already. Next, I want to add in an animation that as soon as you switch from one page to another, instead of doing a harsh cut, it will slowly fade in the new page. In preparing this example, I already knew that we were going to build it like this. So I took this into account when setting up the page structure. If we open a page, for example, the products page, you see that we have a component called page wrapper. This page wrapper component is actually right now only a div. This div sets specific height, so we have something to scroll, especially on these lower pages. It just looks a bit better. But by having a shared wrapper as well, we can pretty easily add this transition in to animate from one page to another. We do so again by importing motion from Framer Motion and then converting this div into a motion.div. And immediately you already see the error message pop up we had before as well. This is again because we are rendering a server component which actually uses context. So the change we need to do again is add use client at the top of our file. Next, we need to tell Framer Motion how this animation should look. We do so by adding a few properties to this div. First, we add a property initial, which we can, for example, set to opacity 0 and Y 20, so it has some sort of offset. Then we add the property animate, which will be the state it animates to when it appears on the screen. So in this case, we want the opacity to fade in and the Y position to become 0, so then it animates from 20 to 0, which moves up a little bit. And the last property we have to add is exit, where we add opacity zero and the Y20 again. So that means that if it leaves the page, it will again move down a little bit and fade out. If we save this and look at our page again, and for example, visit the products page, you already see that we have the animation by again, just adding a few lines. There's one small thing you notice here with the line as soon as you switch pages. Now what's happening here is actually that the image is for a second overflowing the navigation. What we could do to fix that is add a z-index to our header so it will always lay on top of the rest of the page. If we go to components header, we can make that relative and add z10. So this will already put it on top of the image. But the other thing is that this header currently does not have a background color. So as soon as it moves behind the line, you will still, still see that behavior happening, for example, with the line. Uh, so we also can add a background beige. And as soon as we do that, you see that it's not overflowing. Next to adding animations that are shared between different pages, you can also use Framer Motion to actually add animations that only work on one specific page. We, for example, go to this products page. It would look really nice if these animations faded in just a little bit later than the rest of the page as soon as you load this page. Let me quickly also open the inspector so we see a little bit more images because that makes the effect even better. We can find these images in products page. 
where you see that I rendered three times the exact same image. The first thing we need to do again is converting this image into a motion dot image and importing motion from frame or motion again. And of course, add use client to the top of this page as well. If I would use this in production, I would actually move this component into a separate component. So only this component needs to be use client instead of the full page. That way we send as little JavaScript as possible to the client. But for now, this is fine to start with. Let's quickly change the other images to a motion image as well. And then again, we need to tell Framer Motion how this animation should look. Let's first add the initial state again. ST0. And maybe this time we do a translation on the X axis. And then we add animate, which makes the opacity 1 and the X position 0. So then it moves from right to left, like you saw happening really quickly. And the final thing we need to add is exit, which again adds the opacity to zero and moves it back to the right. So if we now go to the home page and then go back to this page, you see that there is actually an animation happening. But what you also notice is that it doesn't really feel like it's coming fully from the right. And the reason behind that is because the full page is actually also at the same time transitioning from the bottom to the top when the image is coming from right to left. So it actually looks like it's moving diagonally. A great improvement we can still do for this is add a small delay to the animation. We can do that by adding another property to this object called transition. And that again is an object which has a delay property. And we can set that, for example, to 0.3 seconds. We then copy this to the other two objects as well and move to the home page and then back. You see that right now, first the page animates in and then the new images appear. And with that, we suddenly have a website that went from a pretty static, perhaps boring website to a website that just has these small details that actually make the difference. If you do want to add these animations to your own project, I always recommend checking with your designer as well, if you have them on your project, that is. The reason why is because it's really easy to, to overdo these animations, to go just too far, which actually makes your website maybe even worse than when it didn't have the animations. It's all about adding the small details and never overdoing it. But I hope with these examples you saw how you can quickly add animations to your website with only most of the times just a few lines of code. And by doing so, make your website stand out from all the other ones. These details do make the difference. You find the code of the build in the description, as well as some other useful link. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.